want to show you guys, we've got a 71 CUDA in the garage. Um, I want to show you what we're going to do to it. I'll do a quick video intro of what we got. Uh, some things on where we plan to go in the process. We're going to document and uh, let's see what we got. I'll keep it short and to the point. So we had the car sandblasted. Uh, we put in epoxy. Nothing else has been done to the main car so far. Um, just going to protect it and uh, we'll start getting panels. I'm going to put it on a jig, a frame jig I got for uh, building some race cars because um, we're going to cut so much off the back, the car is a little bit rougher than we thought. And if we do it on the rotisserie, it's going to fold the car. So we're going to give it a little more support. Um, and I'll see if I can video some of that happening and uh, take you along the process. All right, so we'll take a look at the car real quick. Um, you can see out here, we've got to put a couple panels here. Um, the car is going to get full floors, probably front to rear. If you look, there's a lot of... There's some patchwork done in here where someone's done another floor job on uh, four corners of it. It's just not up to the, the par of, that we want to take this 71 CUDA to. Um, this was a 318 car, so I'm not too worried about keeping originality. Kind of make a tribute car and more to come on that. Uh, we're going to end up doing a roof. The roof is pretty eight up here on um, the channels. There's a couple dents in the top of it. Um, we can flip it over. Actually, I'll flip it over. A um, couple dents in it. We got all these channels over here that just are rusted through. By the time we end up replacing channels and fixing dents, it's just easier to put a roof on the car. Um, we're putting full quarters on the back. You can see the, the channels in there are eight up. And uh, the, these were quarters that were installed on top of other quarters. So I'm assuming when we get we pull the quarters off, it's just going to get worse. Um, same thing, the trunk wasn't sandblasted. We knew while the sandblasting was happening that we weren't going to do a trunk. Um, it's a two-piece trunk someone put in there. It's rusted and it's kind of folded up in the center. So that's another thing that we just decided we're going to we're going to install fender uh, trunk extensions are getting installed. We got that car. The whole tail panel is going to come off. You see, there's not too much left of it. Another reason we can't leave it on this rotisserie is you know when the tail panel comes off this piece is going to be in the way uh, take a look at the bottom of the car we see some more what we're looking at why we need quarter panels um, probably going to do inner outer wheel wells um, same thing you'd see the trunk see this car we got it um, they had a lot of undercoating on it it looked like they knew the kind of work that they did and to try to co cover it with bondo and undercoat so when it blasted you know, when you sandblast the car, you get the true, true, uh, true colors of what it is. Obviously, the frame rail paid up. We knew that we got the car when it came here um, that it was going to have a frame rail section. So this is going to be the first thing we're going to end up installing. Uh, we're going to try to keep everything in place, and when I build the frame jig, we're going to go off these mounts there. We'll go off these rear shackles, make sure they're mounted in, and I'm going to build a a couple pieces as reference point that hopefully we can pull the frame rail out and slide in the new frame where we know and I'm going to take measurements make sure the car with its previous work hasn't had these points moved um, but hopefully we'll jig that up good enough that when we put it back together you know um, everything's going to be in factory locations or where it was um, you can see the patchwork on the bottom floor pan someone cut a section in there um, between that and then the rust holes in it the floor pan over there. Every corner part of this floor pan just needs work. So it's just easier at this point to put a one piece in, do it right. It's going to look better and it's all said and done. Same thing with this piece. Just with all we're cutting out, it's going to be easier. Also this floor pan, I don't know what they did. You see that one they did all right. This one, it looks like they kind of cut the floor pan and mismatched it. They just don't line up right. So we're going to fix that. Same thing, this up here before we blasted it was all covered with Bonda. You kind of saw a patch a little bit there, um, but now that it's blasted and bare metal, um, you can see the patches, holes, and same thing. It'd be cleaned up, it could be fixed. I mean, it's holding the car solid, but it's just not up to the level we want to do. Um, the front clip is pretty stout, pretty strong. We got a couple spots we got to patch up. Um, I'll roll it over you can see the cow panels a little bit. So we'll put, end up probably putting a cow panel in it. Um, it's pretty poor up there. Same thing with the front. The lower cow there, we'll, we'll fix that, the firewall. 
Um, that's that's all right, and I think the lower calendar there looked good. It was just the upper that was really rough. Right here, that area, we'll patch those up. You know, same thing with the battery tray area. We got a couple couple minor work things to do on it, but that's about the gist of the car. Um, here, we'll take a look at the doors. I didn't epoxy them. We're gonna epoxy them today. While we had it bare metal, the doors they had a. Uh, a bunch of dents on this whole area and what I like to do if I can, the car was a big project, but this one I like to get the dents and the rough body work done before we epoxy it and then I like to put my arm all metal uh, which is on here where most of the metal, all the metal, major metal work's done on the doors and uh, all it's pulled out and I skim coat it with the, the all metal and we'll epoxy it and uh, you know it just, it, it, I think it adheres better to the bare metal so that's why I do it that way. And, I mean, it's just a rough body work. We'll have to go back through and once it's epoxied and then we put our filler primer, the high yield build primer, we're going to start to block this whole door down. And especially down here on this edge right here, uh, the sandblaster went a little bit, a little bit heavy on it. I banged most of it out and got most of it straight, but I can see there's still some more rough body work to get in there. Um, but I don't want to go too crazy with it because if we got to weld up the gaps or the gaps don't fit right, then I'm gonna put heat in this area. We'll have to go back through and fix it anyway. So as of right now, the doors are, are done for what it is. And uh, you know, I got, like I said, there's a couple dents there. And on this door, this door was mostly, if you look right here, just the pit holes in the rust that um, just kinda were seeping through and the blaster showed up. It pulled the rust out of it. So I like to get them filled in. And then down here, we got a patch you know, about that big that we did and rebuilt the corner of the door. So next time you see these doors, they should be an epoxy coat um, and they should match the car. And yeah, well, next step will be, we'll put it on the jig and uh, maybe get some video of that. I'll walk you through the, what I'm doing on the jig. I got the jig under the car. Um, it's pretty much centered. I spent a little bit of time doing that. Um, and, you know, now I'm just double checking and fine tuning my adjustments. Uh, forward to back, side to side, I'm dropping a plumb blob off uh, the suspension points on the driver's side, passenger side, corresponding points that should be straight and equal, um, and just verifying my measurements. That's the easiest way to center this car. It doesn't have to be exactly centered, but to me, it's a lot easier to center the car, make sure it's square, and uh, just if I do have to do any major changes or pulling on the car or anything else, I know... I have good reference points. Well, this side's this, or if I find a spot where the car might have been hit down the road, I could sit there and, you know, adjust it off the other side, assuming both sides are exactly the same. Same thing I'm doing in the back. There's a, a little hole back there on both sides I'm using as a reference point that I measured off the top. And I, I pre checked these holes to make the video not as long to know where I dropped my plumb blob, went back and forth. I'm also checking with the level at the same time just to verify I didn't move anything. So that's my mark on the, the driver's side where I'm coming back on the passenger side, dropping that same plumb blob down. And uh, if you can see, it's real quick. I know it's sped up. I've been tapping the legs to just adjust the jig back and forth a little bit. Um, again, level's in the way, so I'm just moving that. Um, at this point now, I'm checking my measurements in the center, our, our mounts, where we're going to go. I put the 2x2 two two square inch 3 uh bar on its side. I thought it was easier and get a more level doing it that way since I'm not making those cuts and they don't have to be perfect. And I think it should be stronger because it's running right along the rear front spring mounts and then the front where the torsion bar sit in, there's a giant subframe area under there. So that's where that car will drop. It should drop level right on that. And I'm going to drop it in the center. I'm making the center mounts first because what I want to do, I want the car sit naturally where it wants to go. I don't believe this car has been any wrecks or anything. So I don't want to make my mounts all towards the front suspension or the rear suspension have the center bow in. I think this is the best way where there's not a lot of pressure on the front and rear where the car will sit there. It'll naturally want to go there. Then when I do my front and rear mounts, it's not going to bind anything up. I'm not going to jam bars in there. The bars are going to just fit in right where it's not pulling or pushing the car at all. Um, so when I cut off the metal, the car doesn't try going to bind. So at this point, I'm just doing my final adjustments. I'm kind of lowering the car a little bit here or there, you see, on the, the rotisserie. And just getting it really close, just verifying everything. And now the car in the rear sitting on there, I clamped 
clamp the car down um, it was a little bit or I haven't done it yet I'm adjusting my bars just a little bit more just to make sure they're spot on and everything and I finished tack welding them in um, after I clamped them uh, in a second you'll see I'm gonna drop the car all the way on those four supports um, just gotta put a couple more tacks in it and then pull the vice grips off so the car is about ready to be dropped on there and you can see actually I put a vice grip on that right rear it was a little bit higher than the rest of them it didn't want to sit on all the way we're talking about less than an eighth of an inch but I know how square that jig is that car that little bit I mean that's where it needs to be um, right now I'm starting to pull the rotisserie off the car because it right now most of the weight actually all the weight is sitting on the frame jig leveled structurally sound um, so the rotisserie, I'm just unbolting everything. Right now I'm doing the rear shackle bolts on the suspension. And it will go back on this rotisserie. When we're done with all the metal work, we're going to put a frame stiffening kit in this car and everything else. And I'm going to do the final blocking, the sanding, everything else like that on the car. It will give it that much of, more of a better finish and make sure I can get everything a lot easier. And at that point, I'm not worried about the structure of the car. Right now, the main thing is right now when we start cutting out the floor pans, the quarter panels, all things that provide structure in this car, that's where we worry about the car sagging. And you'll see in the next video where I go ahead and I stiffen up the front and rear frame areas to really make sure no matter what we cut off on this car, it's jigged up and it's going to be able to go back in there. So I'm taking out the last of the subframe and you'll see we're ready to move on. All right, so we got the Barracuda all welded up on frame jig. I'll do a quick walk around and show you what I got. Um, and we'll take it from there. I think I overkilled it, as you can see, but I don't want it to move. I got the front clip right there, supported on both sides. 3 16 I think a 8 inch I-beam, cross beams, and then I got trailer jacks on it to go up and down to level it. So I can adjust at the height I want. The car is just tacked on there where the rest of the pieces are welded. Um, it's just enough tacks that they'll hold and I'll be able to cut the car off without damaging the frame or anything at that point. Um, it won't let the car move those what six tacks on each frame rail and they're pretty solid ones. Front back I took the major parts of the car, I did the four in the center earlier in the video, let the car hang. I didn't push up or down on the front or rear of the car, let it sit where it wanted to sit, and I'll double check all these measurements, and if I have to adjust something, I will, but I, I think it's going to be all right. We're just like I said, and this frame rail, I didn't weld anything up top, I'm basically used them as a stand reference points, because the first thing we're going to do is take this frame rail out. So it bolts in the back on the shackle. And then so that's welded. I'll unbolt that. And I'm going to end up cutting all this out. But up top, there's no welds on there. I'm going to make some marks no, and take some measurements, write it down underneath them, know exactly where that frame rail is going to sit. The center, the shock tower, that's staying. So I got two good mounts on that. And that's going to pretty much be the main support of the back of the car, along with that back area. Um, and then I just got those so just as good guides where the car is going to come up um, So front to rear we got a lot of a lot of mounts and then in the back you can see more of the shackle mounts I made and then these aren't welded to the frame rail. They're more again of guides I don't know if I'm gonna take that rear frame section out or I think it looks all right We'll see how it separates from the trunk if it comes ripping apart. We'll just buy a new one of those but um, you can see in front of the rear, everything's still level. We're going to move the car over, get it in place. Uh, I got the Mustang coming back in here next to it that we going to be working on. So that's about it for the, the mounting on the frame jig. Nothing crazy, just solid. And the whole car is level. It will give me some good frame reference points, and I can cut this car off a whole bunch. And you can see in the back, I put a ton of extra support because this is where most of this car needs is all this work in the back 
And then I got all the frame sections in the front, so when I do the floor pans, nothing's gonna, there's gonna move. And really, most of this car is gonna get a lot of its support from this rocker panel. And the rockers are real solid in this car, so I'm not too worried about it, especially with this is overkill, but I'd rather overkill a project like this than, you know, do the opposite and the car bend and we go back to it, so. There it is, 71 Barracuda, on to the next video. I'll show you some of the frame rail I do, and uh, it'll be a step-by-step, -step, short, quick, short video on it. This is probably be the longest one on this car. Hope you enjoyed it, maybe you learned something, and uh, comments or advice, feel free to list them below. Thanks for watching.